I do not understand what I do, but for what I want I do, I Chesed, Chesed, son of Shalumia, Achiez, or Pedazur. That really means something, doesn't it? Hey, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Well, right now I'm going to attempt to examine the Bible and dissect some of the churchy language that we can sometimes take for granted, digging into history and languages as I'm able to try and get at the heart of the text so we can hopefully see and apply some of what God has for us in these words today. Now, I'm not formally trained in Scripture. I'm just a guy using resources and a questioning mind to try and get at the truth. That's something we can all do, so I hope you'll do that with me. This time we're looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12 as we've been making our way in this series through the book of Ephesians. We're uh, getting closer to the end here. Uh, in the ESV, starting at chapter 10, it, or at verse 10, excuse me, of chapter 6, it reads, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Uh, speaking in broad strokes, the book of Ephesians has been a letter from Paul that first tells believers who we are, that's in chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 4, verse 16, and then tells us how we should live to fulfill our intended purpose and identity, and I think that's chapter 4, verse 17, until about the end. In verse 10 of chapter 6 now, Paul begins to conclude uh, this whole letter to the Ephesians, metaphorically describing what our day-to-day -day kind of mode of operation should be and how we should view our struggles in life. Uh, verse 10 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. The emphasis in these verses is on the strength of the Lord. Now, believers are told to be strong in the Lord. So there is an act of being we're commanded to undertake. But while there is some action required on our part, the resulting strength is not simply the power of positive thinking or our own determination of will. The strength is found in the Lord. The source is his might. Uh, this power is both offensive and defensive in nature. Having strength is for taking action, that's the more offensive side, and the armor of God is uh, our, for our defense. And in both cases, God is our source of power. Now with all this talk of offense and defense, I want to be clear, it's absolutely vital we have the right perspective on what and who it is we're up against. We are going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the schemes of the devil. Uh, it says here. What does that mean? What, what kinds of schemes does the devil busy himself with in our lives? Uh, both the devil and uh, those that are his allies in the spiritual world. Well, generally speaking, despite his portrayals in numerous supernatural horror movies, uh, Satan and his uh, allies are not primarily interested in hurting or scaring people. That makes for some crazy interesting movies. That does, I don't think biblically that's his primary interest, to, to just hurt or scare people. He actually wants to divert our lives away from God's agenda. Um, I, I, I see that beginning in the Garden of Eden, uh, in Genesis chapter 3, verses uh, 1 through 5, in how he diverted Adam and Eve from their purpose and from what God had told them. Uh, I see that continuing in um, Satan's hopes of seeing Job curse God. We see that in Job chapter 1, verse 11. Um, I see it in how he sent his minions to interrupt the ministry of God's angels to humans in Daniel chapter 10, verses 13 and 14. Uh, and he even influenced Peter to envision an alternate agenda for Jesus and his ministry in Matthew 16, 21 through 23. And that was after trying to tempt Jesus himself toward uh, an, an alternate path in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. So that's more of what he seems to primarily be about. Um, verse 12 now, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Now, a, a look at the Psalms quickly makes it clear that God's people have certainly had human enemies. 
And there is a sense in which we still have human enemies. You could probably think of some people in your life that you think of as enemies. But the Holy Spirit is revealing here that no human is our enemy in the truest sense. Yes, people who hurt us are fully responsible for their choices. They are also unwitting tools of Satan's agenda who provides them with tempting, evil choices they choose to embrace. Uh, Satan is a major reason the world is as painful as it is, and placing him in quarantine will actually be a necessary component of Christ's immensely prosperous reign when he physically returns to govern the earth, uh, as is described in Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. Without Satan and his demonic allies, this world would have far less evil than it does. Uh, these evil spiritual creatures are our truest enemies and our battle is about keeping them from derailing our involvement in God's kingdom plans. So what's in all this for geeks as we look at these verses? Well if you're a geek chances are uh, chances are good that you've experienced some emotional hurt. Uh, in my experience that just seems to come with the package for a lot of geeks that I've met. Uh, maybe recently or maybe a lot over the course of your life Maybe you've been made fun of, criticized unfairly, been unappreciated, or even hated. When that happens, it's really easy for us to see people as our enemies. They're the ones that are there. They're the ones that we see doing to this, do, doing these things to us. Uh, I can think of a couple people right now from both inside and outside of my church that I struggle not to view as my adversaries. When they come to mind, my first thought is usually uh, disgust or anger because of something they've done that affected me in some way. But the real battle I need to fight is not with them, but with the bitterness that keeps inviting itself back into my thought life that I make welcome at times um, when they come to mind. It's a, it's a bitterness that keeps me from seeing them as people that need Jesus. Uh, people that Jesus might want to use me to help them see truth in some way. But as long as I see them as soulless enemies or mere obstacles, I will never be available for what God might want me to do in their lives. Uh, in both of these cases I'm thinking about in my life, there's also some of my own sin that contributed to how I was hurt. In one case, I added fuel to the fire and a tense exchange. In the other case, some recurring dysfunctions in my own perspective on life caused the hurt I feel to be blown way, way out of proportion. Uh, every time these individuals come to mind, it seems to take me at least a minute or two before I even remember that I contributed or continue to contribute my own junk to my issues with them or how I'm thinking about them. And sometimes I move on to thinking about something else before I remember my own sin as a component at all. It is so much easier and momentarily satisfying for us to see our relational problems in this binary way, you know, where we say, they are the villain, I am the victim. But people and life are both usually a lot more complicated than the fictions we enjoy or invent. You know, we, we recognize that about ourselves. We want other people to understand, I'm, I'm not as simple as you, you probably think I am, you know. And yet we don't remember that about other people, that they are just as complex, you know, in, in who they are and what they have going on in their lives uh, as we are. Um, people are, are in life are usually both usually a lot more complicated um, than the fictions we enjoy or, or invent. Uh, when we feel like a completely innocent victim, well, we may be. That can and does happen. But we should also ask ourselves if we maybe, just possibly, might have contributed even the smallest bit of our own sin to a situation that hurt us. And at the same time, we should ask ourselves if something about our perspective on life is allowing the way we are treated to have a bigger effect on our emotions than it actually should. When we misidentify people as our primary enemies, evil wins. Evil wins when we do that. We become bitter or fearful or apathetic. We allow ourselves to be stripped of our purpose in life. Um, but if we see the true nature and identity of our enemy, then the defeats in this life begin looking smaller 
or even insignificant in light of the eternal victory we've been, we've been guaranteed will come in full and that we can actually start experiencing even now as we allow our perspective to be corrected and changed.